Welcome to the Sorcery Podcast, your sacred space to delve into spiritual tools, topics and practices that will illuminate your path of soul remembering and healing. I'm your host, Lija Costa, a soul guide, alchemist, soul writing coach and the creator of the Trust Pathway. I'm deeply grateful to have you here with me. Together, we will embark on a profound exploration of self-discovery and healing, unlocking the secrets that lie within. Hello and welcome to the Sorcery Podcast. And today I have a special guest with us. I've been fangirling over Marina for a long time. She is really amazing what she does. And I'm sure she will introduce you better, but just so you have an idea, Marina is a soul alchemist with over 30 years of experience, and she accelerates leaders' journeys by uncovering and transforming karmic blocks. She's also an intuitive teacher and author, and she offers unique breakthroughs and certifies others in her Akashic Records methods, empowering a new wave of human-serving leaders. Isn't that amazing? So the reason I wanted to bring Marina into the podcast is because we are slowly opening up to the world of Akashic Records, and I want Marina to share with us everything that she knows with over 30 years of experience, what Akashic Records actually is, how it can help us to heal karmic wounds, and how we can tap into it in order to receive clarity, receive guidance, and also healing. So Marina, on to you. How this journey into the Akashic Records started, because I assume when you started over 30 years ago, Akashic Records was a pretty new methodology. <laughs> Do you want to tell yeah, us about no, it? That, that's interesting because I don't have 30 years experience in Akashic Records. Oh, okay. That's seven years. And I will explain a little bit about that journey, but I have been doing intuitive work for 30 years. So I've been like doing tarot and had a massive interest in the occult, uh, and had a pendulum so I have been doing this kind of work mm. for a long time and I have served and supported you know lots of thousands thousands of clients but the Akashic Records is is an interesting one because I hadn't heard of the Akashic Records myself until seven years ago and I came across it just by chance so I was doing this spiritual work but I was also in corporate so very mm. much kind of like you know I need to make money and um, I have a very creative uh, side to me so I did fine art um, at university and also obviously wanted to have a career where I could create good sums of money because money is an enabler for me to have experiences that I really want mm -hmm. as I'm sure it is for many of your listeners as well yeah. and so I combined creativity with retail so I be, I trained to be a visual merchandiser window dresser oh, so wow. I eventually had a career that kind of took me all around the world supporting the brands and the the companies that I worked for with you know their visual looks and how they presented their products in stores things like that and in windows mm -hmm. campaigns that type of thing but I got made redundant from that career and it was kind of like it came to that crossroads in a very uh, very dramatic way because I wasn't expecting to get made redundant um, mm -hmm. along with 70 other people so I wasn't the only person but me being the only visual merchandising manager of a global company I was kind of like well my job's safe it's absolutely yeah. fine <laughs> and it was like no uh, so it's kind of I found myself at this crossroads and it was kind of like okay fair enough I will go and find another job that is going to still support this creativity that I have within me and I could not, for love of money, get back into my career at, at the level that I wanted to. So I had to, I had to surrender mm -hmm. to eventually a part-time job, still doing visual merchandising because it's it's what I love to do. But at that point, I was kind of like, okay, if I can't get back into that career, what am I here to do? And that's when my spiritual journey really started to take shape, and I started to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And started to 
learn about other beings that I hadn't really connected in with before. Of course, I was doing my tarot and I was doing like I was using my intuition and whoever I was connected in with. But I started my path back uh, with angels and I'd never I'm not religious at all. I'm not baptized. So I hadn't grown up in an, in, you know, like in a, an environment, a family environment around religion or anything like that. So it was interesting that I felt that angels was the, the place for me to start to um, go on my healing journey, which is essentially what I was doing. So fast forward a few years and it was kind of like I was still trying to find my direction. What am I here to do? really starting to not like working in retail it was kind of like really frustrating and that's when i divinely timed found the akashic records on a facebook live in uh, somebody's group and they were posting it was uh, i don't know if do you know ashley moon is um, angel cafe she was she was hosting some healers in there and i'd asked a question or answered a question the day before this lady was going live and it was like I thought she was going to tell me something about my purpose my direction because mm -hmm. that's what I was really seeking as we all do if we get to that point yeah and what she revealed from the Akashic records I hadn't heard of them was that I had a master program of alcoholism I was kind of like okay that's not what I was expecting <laughs> yeah. um, what, what I hadn't revealed to anybody even like my my you know my husband because of the shame was that I had a psychological addiction to alcohol. I'd got my physical addiction down, but the psychological addiction, I could not switch off the thoughts, the mental battle that I had all of the time around not picking up and having a drink. And that consumes a lot of my energy, it consumed a lot of my life, as you can imagine. And, mm. you know, I've got two small kids, so I was still kind of working, still trying to figure out where I was going. And she cleared it in about 10 seconds. That switch went off. That's that that master program was released from Akashic Records. The switch went off and it was like this massive epiphany wow. of, oh my God, it's gone. Really? <laughs> and it's like, okay, I need to know what these things are and I, I need to understand how I can support other people. Maybe not with such a profound breakthrough, but in any shape or form to, to to help people have their own breakthroughs so that they can move forward and get their life back or go on their healing journey. Uh, that's what I'm here to do. So that's been my journey for the last seven years of um, really understanding the Akashic Records, how to use them, how you can connect with them, because there's lots of different ways. And just understand that they're there for us. We Everybody's got an Akashic Records and we can all access them. So that's my been my journey. And I've created lots of different ways to facilitate people accessing the records. So I've got physical products such as cards. I've got my certification. I do my master classes. I do free healings. I do all sorts of stuff. Just yeah. really kind of to empower it's an empowerment tool and I, I want people to feel empowered like I had been empowered in that moment to be able to take their life back isn't that amazing what I normally <laughs> say yeah it did like we are normally say to my clients is when they like they come to me for a reading I'm like I will be a channel for your reading but yeah. you don't get necessarily what you're asking for but what you need and yes. at that time you are such a proof of that <laughs> Yes. You asked the question yes. that was actually, it led to it. Yes. By healing that part of yourself, it led to your Absolutely. purpose. <laughs> yeah. And what I realized is my ego needed something like really big proof that this, this stuff works for me to go all in, you know. So, and, you know, my ego kind of got that. So it's like, okay, okay, this stuff works. We're going all in on this. So, oh, that's amazing yeah. that's amazing mm. so you started your journey to learn the akashic red straight away straight away so literally in the june so it'd be seven years in june that i've been sober and i've not had any alcohol um by december that year i was i doing i was doing uh soul realignment readings and i was getting paid for those so i literally started my training in august and by december i was i was yeah i was getting paid income from that i did soul realignment for a little while and then i started to add in my own bits and pieces and then eventually created my own modality because i'm a massive fan of pendulum and there's a lot of pendulum alchemy mm. that i kind of added in 
I've expanded the concepts around soul, soul realignment, which is just the karmic blocks where we, we, we add in alignment energies into the void and there's other bits and pieces. There's unlocking of soul powers that we do within that. And there's also a business level that we also look at as well, where we, we connect in with the business records and we work with the soul of the business. So there's mm -hmm. there's different ways that we can use the Akashic records. And it's not just for ourselves. It's for our businesses. It's for our homes. You know, everything's got an Akashic records. So That's we can we can tap into that. Wow. So for the listeners that don't know what Akashic records are. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because we are here to bring awareness to that because it's an amazing, as you said, tool to empowerment. Yes. So do you want to explain? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So the Akashic records are a an etheric realm. So you can't see them. You can't touch them. Well, some people can see them, um, but generally, you know, you can't you can't see them in your everyday in your everyday mm. life. Um, but they're an etheric realm that sit on the fifth dimension. Um, so we're third, we're third dimensional human beings. We've got a physical body. And then our fourth dimensional space is our thoughts, our feelings. And then fifth dimension, we start to enter in the spirit realms. And so we access the, the Akashic records through the fifth dimension. And they're basically a record, as it says, Akashic records. Mm -hmm. They are a record of all of our soul's journey from the soul's creation right from the beginning of time although time doesn't exist in the fifth dimension but from when your soul was first created from divine source or god or whatever your terminology is and it started its journey wherever that journey was it might have come straight down to this planet you may have gone off to other realms other dimensions and all of that is recorded in the records so all of your thoughts your feelings your choices your relationships your memories your consequences all of the things that you've mastered your gifts all of your traumas and your wounding, everything is recorded in the records. And the way that it normally gets visualized is by a library and every book representing a lifetime of your journey, your soul's journey. So you can go into this library and you can access your soul's information and you can start to untap and unlock maybe some past life gifts that you have that you're not really using to their full capacity in this lifetime. So you can unlock those and start to tap into that consciousness. But you can also heal your past, which really supports your present. Mm. So for me, with this master program of alcoholism, that wasn't a present lifetime program that I had. It was from the past. The lady didn't go into any details around that. She just said that you had this, but and then she cleared it. So that influenced that hold that that master program had from whatever lifetime I decided to use alcohol as a as, as a crutch or whatever it was for and then you know like an avoidant or a number mm. it was still influencing me today I was still holding it within my energetic uh, system mm. which is basically what the Akashic records also are although we visualize them as a library and something external to those they're actually part of who we are so our energetic DNA holds our Akashic records. Some people think that the Akashic records actually sit in the seventh layer of our aura. So there's there's different there's different thoughts around or perspectives around that. But essentially, we all have an Akashic records because we've all had some kind of journey mm -hmm. and experience as a soul being in a human form, and we are able to access that. When I say we are able to access, if you're listening to this podcast, then you are able to access your Akashic records because you're a certain, you're, you have interest in this. You have a certain level of awareness mm -hmm. about yourself where you, you want to understand, you're curious about your, your journey, or you want to do some healing for yourself. So you will have the capacity to go into your own records. They've become popular in the last 30 years because as um, a collective humanity, you know, population, we, we've, we've reached a certain level of consciousness where we're able to access. Before them, because they've been around since the beginning of time and, you know, they're mentioned in the Bible, they're, you know, culturally known all around the world. They're, they're known as the Akash, the soul records, the book of life. But before then, it was highly conscious people, prophets, saints. They were the kinds of people that could access the Akashic records. But and, and you know, general public, you know, we were just in survival mode. So we had yeah. no, <laughs> we had no <laughs> interest in trying to access, uh, you know, something about ourselves from the past life. You know, I'm trying to survive and put food on the table. So. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? But now we, now we're at, you know, we we have 
yeah, the life, our life, our lives are different. So we're able to able to do this. And the beauty of being able to access your Akashic records, as I say, they're an empowerment tool. So whatever you're doing for yourself, also know that you're doing that for a collective. Um, you're raising the vibration of the planet. You are supporting your ancestors, and uh, you know the things that are still you're still holding from your ancestral lineage. Um, the traumas and the beliefs and the programming and all of that, any healing that you do for yourself, you're also supporting your family and your support in humanity. So it's, you know, it's a win-win, win-win kind of uh, yeah. situation when we're using the Akashic Records. Yeah, that's so true. As the saying goes, when you heal yourself, you heal your future generations, you heal the, Absolutely. the, the yeah. world. But yeah, that's true. Yeah. So would you like to describe how like when you go into the akashic records what exactly you experience in your body you know what exactly you see if you see anything um mm -hmm. for the listeners to kind yeah, of visualize absolutely. yeah so i use the akashic records in two ways i i teach or i i take people on a guided journey um mm -hmm. if i'm doing group work because that seems to be the, if, if you're very new to the Akashic Records, it's the easiest way to get into your records is through a guided meditation and, and doing this journey. So as part of that journey, what you might find, depending on what your Claire gifts are, is that you can use your imagination. You may be very visual and you can see, you know, all of the books and you can see the furniture and, and the, the expansion of your, of your library, the space. For some of you, you won't be able to do any of that and it'll be a sense of knowing. I just know that I'm in the Akashic Records. I don't know why, but I just know it. And for some of you, you might feel your way into the records and you can just, you know, your senses are just there. I'm a knowing, so I can't see the records. I, I can use my imagination to, um, to a certain level, especially if somebody else is guiding me, not so much when I'm guiding others, but I just know that I'm in the records. So I have to have fully, I fully trust myself and I trust my guys that I'm in the records. So that's one way that I use the records. The other way that I use the records is in a very conscious way with a pendulum. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a faster way of using the records. I use an invocation to get into the records. I use the pendulum to ask questions. So I'm like a psychic detective. So there's no feeling, there's no visualizing that is needed there because I'm just using my, my mind, my logic, and also my intuition in terms of what I need to ask. And I will find out the information about the past life, who the person was, what was going on, what's the kind of karmic pattern that is running, what's the energetic and frequency. So I have charts that help me get this information. And I do it in a very, very conscious way. And one of the reasons that that really works is that you're not energetically getting involved in any of the healing that is needed for that person, which means that you don't feel drained, you don't feel tired when you're doing this work. Because the Akashic Records, actually, when you're wandering about the records, it can feel it can be quite tiring after a few hours, depending on you know what you're doing and how much you're doing. So there's definitely different ways, and I, I would encourage you to try and find what your your best way is. So as I say, I also have a deck of cards, which is a 3D portal into the Akashic Records. So you, again, it's a very conscious way, but you can tune into the card. You can see what your guides are giving you through the card. You can also use automatic writing. So get yourself in a semi-meditative state and then ask questions and allow yourself to just write the information through. So it's important for your listeners to know that you're not doing it wrong mm. if you don't see the Akashic Records and you don't have this really beautiful, rich experience. I mean, I get so many people come back to me saying, I saw this and I saw that. And I'm like, oh my God, it sounds amazing. Mm. I just don't see any of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's but I, but I love the fact that I can facilitate and hold the space for and I'm very good at describing so you know I can definitely set the scene but I just don't see it myself so and the, you know that that's perfect so, that's perfect exactly yeah it is it's, it's absolutely perfect yeah from my experience I actually had two two ex different experiences I normally see the room I see like an old kind of you yeah. know library with yeah. an old desk and then yes. you know you know like a bit like your background <laughs> yeah. yes like all those old-fashioned books like I absolutely love it 
and you know that little ladder that goes like very yeah, old yeah, fashioned. Yeah, that goes yeah. 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 I think a few people have those. <laughs> yeah, it's so pretty. Normally that's that's the experience I have. But I had another experience about once or twice. I was just a light in the middle of the cosmos. Like a yes, black so you've gone into your galactic records there, I think. I think oh. there's a few people that when they've stepped through the door and are taken through the door they've stepped out into the cosmos or they've stepped out into galaxies and it's kind of like, okay, so you've gone into a different part of your Akashic records and you've gone into your galactic records. So that will be where you would access your your journey, your soul's journey before you came and incarnated on Earth. Oh my gosh, really? So you could go find out more about your soul family and, you know, oh. you know where you've been in terms of, yeah, your kind of star traveling. Uh, you'll be able to find out a little bit more about that, but also connect with your soul group so your, your your soul group origination could be found there. So most, most of my clients are not from Earth. We, we incarnate on Earth because we want to really learn separation from divine source. And what better way than to be in the physical body and, mm-hmm. and um, work be sheep. totally separate. Totally yeah. separate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that sounds to me like you've gone into a galactic record. So you could explore that further by just setting the intention and this is this is one of the key things around using the Akashic Records. You do have to have an intention to go in. Otherwise, you just end up wandering about and you're not really it's nice to be in there, but you're not really actively doing anything. So you're not empowering mm-hmm. yourself to use the tool in the right way um, or, to, you know, to the to the best of uh, you know what's available. So have the intention. So for you, I, I you know, set the intention of I'd like to go back into my Galactic Records and actually, I would like to call in either a member of my soul group that I'm connected with, my soul origination, and, and meet with them. Or could you give me some idea around what my soul origins are? Where, where did I come from? And we know we all come from divine source. But the way that it's kind of deemed, as I understand it, is the first location you then go to once you've separated from divine source, that is your soul group. That is your soul origination which could be Octaurus, it could be Sirius, it could be Lyrian, it could be Vega. Uh, there's, I mean, there's, there's loads wow. of different soul, uh, soul regions that you could come from. That's and so they all have characteristics. That's so, you so interesting. Who you are. I think it was actually during one of your meditations, your guided meditations, that I, I went through, like I went to this, it was just a light oh, okay. in the middle of the galaxy, literally. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. it was actually a, a, money, a money clearing one. Oh, um, okay. Like, That's interesting. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out <laughs> the relation. But again, it might be that I was asking for it and it was not exactly what I needed. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And there is galactic karma. I'm actually going to have a conversation. Have I had a conversation about that? Yeah. So I've, I do a, a, a podcast with a, a fellow Akashic Record uh, lead, you know, teacher, expert. And we talked about karma, not on our last podcast, the podcast before, and we talked about galactic karma. So there is galactic karma as well as our human earth karma, uh, because when we think about the Orion Wars, uh, if you think about Star Wars, Star Wars was based on the Orion Wars, which is a galactic, it's a galactic war, it's a massive galactic war where we had you know, the dark and the light, you know, that was literally playing out, it's still playing out, we see that here on the planet. Um, but it's uh, the Orion Wars are infamous, and um, we would have created karma even just being part of you know those particular wars, and so that we will be holding that um, that that energy within our Akashic records, but also within our energetic DNA. So yeah, it's not just human karma; we have got galactic karma as well. If human karma wasn't enough. <laughs> Yeah, but when I do the clearings, I just set the intention that we're clearing all the karma. So it doesn't matter what the karma is, it's just like we just clear it all. So it doesn't matter. (laughs) You're right. If you're like human karma, yeah, it's it's more than enough. It is more than enough. Sometimes I'm like, I wonder why did my soul chose this path? Seriously. I know. know. All learnings, all spiritual growth lessons, you know. We've got to keep remembering that. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so very interesting. When it comes to clearing or getting clarity or getting healing or getting guidance, mm-hmm. so you mentioned about setting the intention. Yes, absolutely. 
is just then very organic and it happens on um on another level or should it be a bit more conscious throughout the process in yeah. to keep so asking for the intention yeah i guess it depends on how you want to do it so for me if if you had an intention that you wanted to say look at money blocks for me the easiest thing would go and find a healing journey that you could go and listen to and just take part in so you haven't really got to think about it you just receive mm -hmm. And listen to, you know, for instance, one of my guided journeys and I will bring forward the blocks that need to be healed and you will receive that. And whatever needs to be edited, cleared, released, healed, alchemized, it will happen on your behalf. So that is the easiest way. But if you wanted to make it more specific or you wanted, if you had an interest in actually learning about how to use the Akashic Records, then I would actually look at a specific training because that is going to be that's going to be the best way to do it. I mean, you can set the intention if you're a pendulum user, you could set the intention of opening your Akashic records, which I always do with a specific invocation so that you're basically connecting in with the right records. That's really important. You need to go into your own records. And if you are definitely doing this for other people, you've got to do a certification of some kind because mm. You don't want to set anything in place that is then going to create more karma, negative karma for yourself. Mm. So you definitely need to learn the process of getting into somebody else's records. But if you're using your own, then your guides are going to know that you want to go into your own records. But even with myself, I still set the intention and I, mm. and I the specific invocation that I use to go into my own records. And I use my details, like my full name, my date of birth. Mm. Of birth. Yeah, so it's yeah. very specific. We know we're going into the right records. And then if you have a pendulum and you do some pendulum alchemy, then you could just ask whilst you've got your records open for all um, all karmic blocks, all, um, say, vows, agreements, contracts that I've created that are blocking my money flow. And then if you do pendulum alchemy, then, you know, you know that you'd be spinning your pendulum anti-clockwise to do that releasing. And then I would always encourage you to then put something in back in to the void with a clockwise spin that's you know maybe abundance or divine love something that's a higher vibrational frequency just so that, that it's filled with something mm. that's going to support you so that's definitely one way you could do that same exercise of asking for money blocks to be cleared and you could do it with your eyes closed and you could visualize and then you could ask for the violet flame to come through because the violet flame is under the law of one so anybody can invoke it and you could you could just imagine, sense, feel or know that the violet flame is just, you know, going through all of your Akashic records and you're just asking for all of the money blocks, agreements, vows, programming, conditioning, whatever it might be, that again are affecting your money flow. And just imagine yourself in this violet flame and it's going through your records and you'll just sit there just taking that and just allowing things to be released until it feels done and complete. So it'll be an intuitive process. And then what you could then do is, again, just ask um, for the energies of abundance or divine source energy or wealth and prosperity, you know, those types of codes to now go back into those spaces where there's been energy healing. So you could do that visually and just asking, invoking it out loud. I mean, that's essentially all we need to do is get into our Akashic Records as an intention. It's all about us and how we show up and belief in our own power it's an empowerment mm. tool so exactly it's about self-trust as well trusting absolutely. ourselves enough yeah yeah so with my cards i would i'd get you to pick a card in terms of say money blocks what's my money block you pick a card from my deck and then it may not even be connected with money but it could be soul contracts oh okay mm. i've got a contract clearly that's affecting money so i include a bit of an activation and healing is part of the masterclass and a key to use as a pendulum to clear the money block. So there's lots of different ways. It's just finding your way mm -hmm. that's going to help you to start to use this space and this tool to really help your journey. Amazing. One thing that my clients and I'm sure a lot of listeners, I think they struggle with is when they go into the fifth dimension, Yeah, they report that they fall asleep and then they can't remember. Oh anything. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for, <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> so, what do you recommend? Is this still the Akashic Records process is still working? Yes. 
Yeah, okay. yeah. So <laughs> I, I kind of use that as a caveat also if I'm doing a deeper meditation journey uh, that you may fall asleep. It's yeah. normal. <laughs> uh, and so what happens there is your conscious, even though I, I, you know, as part of my journey, I take the ego out of the room just so that if you are semi-conscious, you get that information through. But if you fall asleep, it just means that the healing just needed to happen at a much deeper level. And you just didn't need to be part of the process of whatever we were doing in the journey. So it's all it's all perfect. And usually what I find is as I'm coming out of the Akashic Records, people wake up. So they, they, they are aware, but they're not aware. And they're just going into this beautiful, blissful sleep, whilst the healing can really happen at a deep in a deep, deep way for that person. So that's usually what happens. Yeah, yeah, that happened to me as well. And I think was under one of your meditations. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm subscribed to a YouTube channel, by the way. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I go and sometimes I do it. And I don't go very far sometimes. Sometimes I, I'm no. like, I go through all of it. And other times when you start talking about going into the root, <laughs> boom, yeah. I just... I don't remember anything else. I see. Yes, you've not even, if you've, you're only at the roots, we're only grounded at that point. <laughs> so you're just like, you're not even in the records. But that, that's perfect because because I channel, um, I, I use a lot of angelic and uh, yeah, kind of like seventh, eighth and ninth dimensional beings. It, it it can just knock people out. And it's it's all perfect. It's what's supposed to happen. So it's, uh, I always know that there has been deep healing that's happened. Shifts have occurred. And then really what I encourage people to do is if they're using the Akashic Records on a regular basis to start keeping a journal so you can start to see maybe how far you got in that journey, uh, what you remember, what guidance you were given. Because, you know, your, our guides give us guidance as well about our next steps or whatever we ask. They'll give us the guidance. Maybe what gifts you've unlocked, what blocks you cleared and healed that you can remember. But what it, this also does is it serves as a really good way to so that you can start to see what's shifting in your own life mm -hmm. based on the energies that you've been releasing and activating. And I, I install success anchors as well. So I use the records to actually influence the future by putting success anchors into our timeline. That's not something that anybody else does that I'm aware of. So I like people to see actually what what progress am I actually making with using this tool, this empowerment tool? What things are shifting for me? Where are my beliefs now starting to change? Where is my perspectives, my triggers being released? Because this is proof for your ego that this stuff works. And so you're more inclined then to actually continue to use this empowerment tool or any empowerment tool to support your journey your ego is always going to need evidence and so it's a really good way to start gathering the evidence as well that's so very true yeah uh, and that's why in some ways or many ways to be honest healing is not just a mindset work no oh my god no it's no it's definitely not <laughs> and going to akashic records actually go in a deeper level although it feeds yeah. the ego with proof yes but also it goes much deeper um, absolutely it's it's a it's a combo it's mind body and soul mm. so the mind and the mindset is important beliefs are important but why not facilitate us changing our mindset or our limiting beliefs by actually clearing a root cause energetic mm. thing of a mindset and belief that maybe we created 20 lifetimes ago that's really making this this mindset hard to change because actually we, it, we, we've been doing it for 20 lifetimes so clear mm. all of that energy we open the door of opportunity and actually our mindset is then much easier to change into something that's more positive. I so it's that. a combination of, it's we, we need to do it all, mind, body and soul. And you refer to it like a, a life's hack. Yes. <laughs> it is. You know what, I, I forget that I do that. Yeah, absolutely. It's totally a life hack. <laughs> why, and, you know, why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we want a life hack to support us? Take us straight to where we need to go. Yeah, the because of course, please. Mm, and then let's just clear it on all timelines, lifetimes, universes, and dimensions, and we're done. Exactly. We don't need to string this out. I'm kind of a big, I'm a big fan of like collapsing time and space with what mm. we're doing. I think you actually say that on your medita guided meditations. Yeah. <laughs> I think you actually say that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like just having your example. It might have taken you years to find oh, out gosh. that you were in the psychological attachment yeah, totally. with alcohol. With alcohol, yeah, absolutely. And I was, 
you know, the whole, it was avoidance patterning and I just, I had no mental space to actually do any of my own healing or look at my own patterning because I was constantly battling that one thing Mm. of trying to control this physical urge and need within me that that was there so i had no space for anything else so that needed to go for me to then really look at myself do the shadow work which you know we're always doing and learn how to use the akashic records so isn't that amazing how life unfolds like yeah if it wasn't for instance you being made redundant you wouldn't exactly. have the time to explore no, it you... wouldn't have even come on my radar yeah you had to be done <laughs> yeah it totally had to be done it was all divinely timed so yeah it's all perfect and so that's why you feel like going to akashic records it's a good way to find your soul's purpose absolutely yeah 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 i mean i didn't use it in that way because it was present well the akashic records were presented to me the akashic records Mm -hmm. found me rather than me finding them but if you want to understand more about your soul's purpose, more about your soul's gifts and what you're naturally good at. And, you know, the things that you've done maybe in the past, you know, maybe you've been creative or a singer or an author, and you've got this real creative streak within you, but you, you kind of really bought into some really like childhood conditioning around you're no good at art. Mm. And so you're really taking that on board. And even though you have this like deep desire to want to be creative, the program is so strong that it doesn't allow you to. But that might be a natural part of your soul's purpose purpose and mission. And so this kind of stuff could then start to be revealed to you in the Akashic Records, release the program in. So then you're you're a little bit more confident about trying the creative stuff and you're you're not as bothered about the judgment. Mm. I'm going to do this for me. This feels good. I don't care what it looks like. There's just part of me that needs to come out and I don't know why. That will get stronger. Um, And then you don't know where that will take you. And for instance, when we're doing healing, if we go to someone or we're doing ourselves healing through Akashic Records, do you reckon we only need one session? Do we need more than one session? For me, it, you definitely need more than one session because when I work with people, I work on their next six month intentions. And so when we have intentions of what we want to actually achieve in the next six months, our ego would have like a list of like a thousand things. But Physically and mentally, we're probably only able to maybe focus on a couple of things because Mm -hmm. usually those things are probably quite big. Mm -hmm. And otherwise we get overwhelmed, we lose momentum um, and then we don't achieve the thing that we want to achieve. So the intentions only bring up the blocks that your soul is willing to give to you or give to me because I'm doing the research that are appropriate for the intention. So there's always going to be blocks that we can find that we can clear. And, you know, these things are done in layers. We're not going to get given all of our lifetime's worth of blocks all in one go because then we go into a healing crisis Hmm. and, you know, we may never get up. So, uh, you know, our guides are only going to give us what we can handle and our soul only gives us what we were available for because some of the blocks are actually probably still lessons and we're still learning the lesson. So we can't release the block because we haven't learned enough of it. We get what we need in that moment. And it it depends on what aligned action we take afterwards, because we have to ground the healing by taking physical action and doing things differently. Otherwise, we still end up just receiving the same stuff. Exactly. Yeah. It's always down to us to have inspired action, to take inspired action. This is why it's mind, body and soul. The body bit is taking the action. So, yeah, for sure. And through your work with clients, do you recommend any aftercare after the session? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we talk about actions and what, you know, based on their intentions, there's always quite a bit of a conversation around what actions and strategies they're going to take after. But any Akashic Record healing, but this would go with any healing that you're doing. You've got to make sure you're drinking lots of water over the next 24 hours because your physical body needs to be flushed as the energy is changing and realigning through your multidimensional being. Um, you may find that there's energetic shifts. It's just being mindful around. You may feel irritated, angry, energized, sad, tearful. And that's perfect. That's normal. It's energy shifting. So we've just got to allow the emotions to go through. And I recommend if people 
are not sure that they, you know, they can use a journal, they journal out their feelings and the thoughts. There might be some memories that come forward as well. And it's like, again, we don't need to label anything, just allow it to come through, just be curious about stuff. But I recommend if my clients are still not sure, then they reach out to me afterwards. You know, this has happened, that's happened. Because mm -hmm. sometimes what you can find is that there is a bit of a healing crisis that happens. Uh, the thing that they were working on, so for instance, if they wanted to improve their relationship with somebody and we've done some energy clearing, it might be that then there's loads of arguments that happen afterwards because the things that have been cleared are really showing them where the issues are that really need to be tackled. And so it then opens up for a new level of healing in that relationship or it means, you know, that maybe that relationship the souls have come to the end of the line and they need to you know just go on different journeys so it can really bring up you know the thing that we're trying to actually clear it really can really really highlight it because there's just that last little bit or there's this opportunity to respond in a different way to what we've always done to really see you know you've stepped into empowerment how are you going to respond to this this is still going on physically how are you going to respond to it so you can find that that sometimes can happen as well. It depends. Yeah, that's very interesting. I think it's the first time I hear about the mood swings uh, after a healing session. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Most people don't feel anything or they will just see, the, they'll feel lighter, they feel more confident, uh, they'll feel more energized. That's the usual response. But it's not always, it depends on the person and how, what other healing modalities there may be also kind of receiving at that time, mm. how invested they are in taking action afterwards. There's lots of reasons in terms of how, you know, how what the reactions are. But I would say you don't get anything any more than what you can handle. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just energy moving. So it's always just remembering this is just energy moving. That's part of the so, process. Yeah, part of the process. That's very, very interesting. And I'm so glad that you brought that yeah. into our awareness. So, my lovely, where can the listeners find you? <laughs> okay, so you can find me on any social media platform, um, and it's Marina the Soul Alchemist. Mm -hmm. And my website is Marina Beach, and that's B W -E C H, and that's .co.uk. And you have a YouTube channel as well. <laughs> yeah, YouTube channel is Marina the Soul Alchemist. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got a lot of free, free journeys on there. I think there's like 90, there's 94, I think, free healing journeys on there. So you, you there's something for everybody on there. And if yeah. you don't find it, let me know because I will create something Aww. to support that. And you have a Facebook group, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I've got a free Facebook group. That's uh, the Soul Alchemist community. I'll leave all the links anyway in the show notes, but it's always nice if you are listening on the go, you know, just to to have that into, you know, your awareness so you can like, let me search. Yeah, <laughs> let yeah, me yeah, stalk yeah. this person from now on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lovely. Thank you ever so much for your wisdom. It was Thank an you. amazing episode with so much wisdom. And I think, it brought a lot what we wanted, which was yeah, bringing yeah. the Akashic Records into awareness. And mm -hmm. it's just another tool that we can use in our healing journeys. Absolutely. Um, and if you not feel comfortable doing it yourself because you don't feel you have the knowledge, you can always look into someone like Marina to guide you through this journey. Thank mm -hmm. you ever so much, my lovely. And You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. I hope you have enjoyed this amazing episode with Marina and maybe this ignited in you a curiosity to explore your Akashic Records, go into your Akashic Records and try to heal something deep within that maybe is blocking you, that is making you feel stuck and consciously you don't know what it is. And we feel this way in so many phases of our lives. Sometimes we just don't know why we feel so stuck, why we feel so unmotivated, why we feel even lost and at crossroads in our lives. We just feel that we are not motivated and that we are not fulfilled. And we have this feeling inside that there is something more, but somehow we just can't tap into it. And maybe going to Akashic Records is the answer. 
And if you're listening to this episode, maybe that is a sign. Before I love you and leave you, I will pull a card from my Trust Journaling deck. And the card that I just pulled is from the Truth Suite. And the Soul Inquiry is, where do I feel stuck? How is it affecting me? Where do I feel stuck? How is it affecting me? And the affirmation is, I am ready to change my life. Oh my God. (laughs) How on point is this card? I can't make this up. Seriously. (laughs) It was the first card that I pulled from the deck. Honestly. (laughs) I think that's your answer. Maybe you can use these soul inquiries as the intention when you go into your Akashic records, just like Marina explained. Just go and put the intention and ask your Akashic records where in your life you are feeling stuck and how it's affecting you. And then your Akashic records will show you what are the blocks or the karma or the conditioning that's there blocking you from moving forward. And then journal about it. Do the automatic writing, which Marina suggested and is normally what I suggest, but I call it soul writing. Just do your soul writing, read these soul inquiries and write three times the affirmation, I am ready to change my life. The time is now. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for listening to the Sorcery Podcast and for holding space for this conversation. It is truly magical to be able to walk with you on this journey of soul healing and inner transformation. If you resonated with this episode and found it valuable, I would be grateful if you could leave a review on iTunes. Your feedback helps me reach more souls searching for guidance and healing. For more guidance and soul wisdom to support Soul Awakening Wingmen through the journey of alchemy, please visit my website www.lijacosta.co.uk Love and healing to all. See you on the next one.